Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the HCL Technologies Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Mandiratha, Head Investor Relations. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Aman. Uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to HCL Tech full, uh, for, the, uh, for Q1 Fiscal 24 earnings call. We have with us Mr. C. Vijay Kumar, CEO and Managing Director, HCL Tech, Mr. Pratik Agarwal, Chief Financial Officer, along with the broader leadership team to discuss the performance of the company during the quarter, followed by the Q&A. In the course of this call, certain statements that will be made are forward-looking, which involve a number of risks, uncertainties, assumptions, and other factors that could cause actual results to differ materially from those in such uh, forward-looking statements. All forward-looking statements made herein are based on information presently available to the management, and the company does not undertake to update any forward-looking statement that may be made in the course of this call. In this regard, we do review the safe harbor statements in the formal industry release document and all the factors that can cause the difference. Thank you, and over to you, Felix. Thank you, Sanjay. Good evening. Uh, good morning, everyone. And Thank you for joining us today for HCL Tech's first quarter FY24 earnings call. Uh, getting into our business performance for the quarter, uh, Q1 is a seasonally a soft quarter for HCL Tech. Uh, as you would know, a lot of productivity benefits for a number of deals kick in during this quarter. Our revenues declined 1.3% sequentially and grew 6.3% on a year-on-year -year basis in constant currency. Our services revenue was down 1% quarter on quarter. Uh, having said that, though we did expect this to be a soft quarter, our performance was lower than our expectation in our services business. I'll go over some of the details on the factors influencing these uh, in, a, in a few minutes. In terms of our operating performance, our rebate came in at 17%. This is at the same level as our Q1 last year. On a sequential basis, it has declined from 18.1% to 17% this quarter. Uh, in terms of uh, segmental performance, our IT and business services had a good momentum on new deals signed, but most of these gains were offset with reduction in discretionary spend on digital. Uh, this has resulted in our ITBS business being flat in constant currency. Our ERS business uh, is continue, continuing to be soft, Again, primarily driven by a couple of large verticals, uh, ERS reported a decline of 5.2% sequentially in constant currency. It feels software revenue was stable year on year in constant currency. The annual recurring revenue, the ARR metric, uh, has grown nicely at 4.7% year on year and is now $1.04 billion, which augurs well for the future. Uh, in terms of industry verticals, uh, our three largest verticals are financial services, manufacturing, followed by life sciences. Uh, we've delivered strong double-digit growth in all the three verticals on a year-on-year -year basis. Financial services business grew 5.1% sequentially and 14.4% year-on-year in constant currency. Manufacturing grew 3.6% sequentially and 16.5% year-on-year. Life sciences grew 13.4% year-on-year. Uh, this uh, has been due to great execution of large deals, which translated into revenue. Uh, this has helped significantly offset the discretionary spend reduction uh, in these verticals. Uh, we saw significant declines in our tech and telecom verticals, uh, primarily driven by cuts in discretionary spend and uh, some associated uh, ram downs. Uh, the pipeline in these verticals are strong and they're in uh, advanced stages. Uh, we expect uh, the growth to pick up in the coming quarters uh, in these two verticals. In terms of geographies, the US reported flat, while Europe and APAC reported a negative growth on a 
constant currency basis sequentially. However, on a year-on-year -year basis, Europe grew 10.5%, uh, followed by Americas by 7.5%, and rest of the world, uh, 6% decline in constant currency. Uh, before I get into our bookings and pipeline, I want to talk about two key topics. Uh, one is Gen AI, and the second one is Hetfield Software. Uh, in terms of Gen AI, I would like to give you a quick update on our Gen AI initiatives. Our approach to Gen AI has been driven by engineering and innovation spirit. Given a tool as powerful as Gen AI, all our efforts are geared towards harnessing its power to bring exponential innovation uh, to our products, solutions, and services. We are also an early adopter of Gen AI technologies as a client at the same time. Our philosophy of consulting, creating, embedding integra and integrating AI within silicon to infrastructure, apps, data, and business processes. Uh, with our engineering heritage, we've been involved in co-creating AI technology stack for the last two decades. Currently, we have 140 plus external and internal projects in Gen AI at various stages of maturity from proof of concept uh, to implementation. We've deployed at scale AI option or operations and engineering business for over a decade and have carved those IPs to fuel the intelligent automation, uh, which is dry ice product line in Hetfield software. Uh, we implemented an AI tech solution, a generative AI-powered human-like voice conversation bot for a global healthcare company specializing in medical devices, diagnostics, nutrition products, and pharmaceuticals. We also implemented an enterprise open AI search using Power Virtual Agent Copilot for a federal uh, corporation responsible for supplying the state's bulk water needs. We're also working on an intelligent aggregator for automated data collection from health authority sites, trial registries, news company websites, and regulatory sites. The information thus collected will be automatically summarized using a Gen AI-based large language model, and a summary will be shared with select recipients via email alerts. A few pharma, medical devices, and technology multinationals have signed up for this solution as pilot programs. Talking a little bit on Hitfield software, uh, we are making good progress with our go-to-market strategy. Uh, we are primarily focused on customer success as a key strategy through a customer success organization. There is a strong renewal focus through a focused approach under senior leadership. There is a dedicated organization to drive partner ecosystems. Uh, four routes on go-to-market with partners have been established, which is GSI, hyperscalers, OEM, ISVs, and business partners. Uh, we now have sharp focus on business partners for big market segment, resulting in a clearly defined pipeline for partner-generated leads. About 10% of new license booking this quarter has come from partner-generated leads. Uh, we continue to emphasize on large deals in software. 11 large deals have been signed this quarter. All this has led to our ARR growth, which continues to grow at 4.2% year-on-year on a constant currency basis. In terms of the product strategy, we are moving forward with a four cloud strategy around the products. Uh, this includes business cloud, uh, products in our business cloud portfolio are designed to support the entire user lifecycle by providing industry leading system integration from applications to endpoints. The second cloud is AppDev Cloud from securely collaborating and automating an organization's core processes to creating great omni-channel and contextual multi-experiences. Our AppDev Cloud helps companies around the world transform digitally. The third is Intelligent Automation Cloud. We transform and simplify IT and business operations by leveraging AI and cloud. Uh, and the fourth is Hybrid Cloud, Hybrid Data Cloud, uh, where customers demand a data platform that is dependable, adaptable, and simple to use. Uh, we deliver on that promise with our analytics database and cloud data platform. Uh, we continue to create partnerships and alliances on Gen AI in our Hetfield software business. Uh, we have recently signed partnerships on Gen AI with hyperscalers to strengthen our offerings uh, through partnerships and alliances. Uh, we are infusing and plugging Gen AI capabilities into our products using Hetfield Prompto, which is Hetfield's enterprise-grade orchestration and prompt engineering platform 
and partner collaboration. Uh, example, Unica, marketing automation. Uh, these products are uh, creating generative AI capabilities with their hyperscaler partners on Copilot and Duet AI. Some of our products are already uh, with Gen AI features. Just moving to bookings, uh, as you will remember, our bookings for previous quarters have been in the range of two billion plus for the last seven quarters. Uh, this quarter, our bookings came in at $1.6 billion, uh, which was soft. Uh, bookings are normally lumpy. We expect some spikes in the coming quarters that will more than make up for the drop in Q1. Uh, I want to call out a few important deals that we signed this quarter. A Fortune 50 healthcare company selected HCL Tech as a strategic partner for managing its end-to-end -end IT infrastructure, uh, modernizing the infrastructure through cloud and security services. Uh, HCL Tech will consolidate these services from multiple vendors and streamline them to transform business operations for the client. Uh, a global financial services company has selected us as a digital transformation partner. Uh, we will help the client accelerate their journey to a hybrid cloud environment and build a secure and resilient technology architecture in new technologies to serve customers with digital first experiences. A US based healthcare company selected Hetfield Tech for large digital transformation and managed services uh, mandate. Hetfield Tech will enhance the client's customer experience and business productivity by modernizing IT enabled and order to cash processes. This is one of the largest deals signed in this quarter. Uh, greater than $250 million. On the product side, a uh, large Asian stock exchange selected HTL Software's DX platform to support their digital transformation journey and the growing trading volumes. A Europe-based financial services firm has expanded its partnership uh, with HTL Software for its Latin American operations. The client will leverage the Unica marketing automation platform to serve its growing customer base through digital first banking services. Uh, in terms of pipeline, I'm happy to report that our pipeline continues to grow. Like last quarter, our pipeline this quarter has increased significantly. Uh, so the last two quarters have seen growth in efficiency-led uh, programs, which is a combination of uh, transformation that is leading to cost efficiency and global delivery models driving cost efficiencies. So these deals uh, have shaped up quite well, and uh, we see several of them in the advanced stages in the pipeline. And uh, this is what uh, is giving us uh, confidence about our ability to convert these large deals in the coming quarters. And these deals are well distributed across uh, US and Europe and in APAC. It is also distributed across uh, our service lines and verticals uh, so we see this as a, a fairly uh, uh, broad-based trend in our pipeline, and the maturity of the pipeline is good. Uh, so forward-looking, I'm optimistic because of the strong pipeline, and many of these projects are in advanced stages. Uh, we continue to invest and gear ourselves to execute well on these projects. Uh, even though it has resulted in a dip in utilization to cater to the deals we are expecting in the coming quarters. In terms of people, uh, our net headcount reduced approximately by 2,500 people uh, during the quarter, uh, while we added 1,800 pressures in line with our plan. Our headcount is reduced primarily due to the fact that we've consciously not backfilled some of our attrition. Our attrition is continuing to come down. Last 12 months, attrition is at 16.3%, down 7.5% year on year. Uh, one of the important decisions we take during this quarter, uh, during this time of the year, is about compensation reviews for our employees and the budget required for that. This year, uh, we've made a decision to skip the compensation review, uh, starting with the management layer, which is E4+, plus, and also defer for junior to mid-level uh, people by a quarter, which is E3 and below levels. While we do this, we will continue to closely monitor the industry trends, and as appropriate, take measures uh, as required. Looking ahead, we are retaining our guidance, the revenue and margin guidance for FY24. Uh, in spite of the decline in revenue and low booking in Q1, 
Uh, we expect to meet the guidance based on strong pipeline with a healthy mix of large deals in advanced uh, stage. We are expecting a strong booking in quarter two. Uh, we continue to invest and gear ourselves to execute well on these projects. We are also taking incremental actions to reduce our cost, which will enable us to meet the margin guidance. Uh, with that overall commentary, I would request uh, Pratik to share some more details on our financial numbers. Uh -huh. Thank you, CBK, and uh, good evening and good morning uh, to all the listeners. Uh, just to recap uh, the top uh, line numbers, uh, overview, XL Tech revenue stood at 3.2 billion, uh, which is down 1.3% sequentially, uh, increase of 6.3% year on year in constant currency terms. Uh, services revenue stood at 2.83, 2.9 billion, down 1% sequentially and up uh, 7.1 uh, year on year in constant currency again. Uh, and within services, ITDS was basically flat year on year, uh, was flat sequentially, and year on year growth was at 9.1% uh, in constant currency again. ERS, uh, as we had uh, discussed in the last call call also, had the full quarter impact of the cuts in the last month of the previous quarter, and uh, showed up uh, sequential decline of 5.2% in constant currency. Uh, and uh, software, on the other hand, was flat year on year, and uh, the annual recurring revenue in software went up 4.7% year on year in constant currency. The EBIT came in at 17%. I will just share the walk in a few, few minutes. Uh, and the net income is at 430 million, which is 13.4% of the revenue, uh, which is up 1.5% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. We continue to focus on improving the return on invested capital, ROIC, and uh, as the page on ROIC shows, uh, the last 12 month ROIC is now at 31.1%. Uh, which is a healthy increase of 2.6% or 260 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. And uh, within that 31% uh, services, ROIC stands at 38% and software at 15.9, just touching 16%. The EBIT movement on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis is 110 basis points. 18.1 uh, uh, declined to 17%. Uh, within that, the software segment revenue decline uh, of about 11 odd million was offset by the one time benefit in the intangible reversal that we got this quarter. And therefore, the margin on the software was pretty much uh, flat year on year and quarter to quarter. Uh, the services margin is what drove the uh, decline. Uh, services margin itself dropped by 120 basis points, which had an exchange impact of about 10 basis points. The balance 110 uh, was operational. Uh, lower uh, utilization contributed to about 36 basis points uh, out of the 110. Uh, travel and uh, other one-time type of costs which we have at the beginning of the year uh, contributed about 33 basis points. Uh, and uh, we did have uh, some one-time benefit in the J in the previous quarter, uh, which became a headwind uh, in this quarter uh, of about 42 basis points. CVK has already spoken about the guidance. Uh, just to give you some more bullet points, the pipeline uh, is at uh, all-time high. Uh, and uh, on a sequential basis itself, it has increased by 18% uh, quarter on quarter, uh, on top of a very decent growth last quarter as well. On a year-on-year on a -year basis, the pipeline is up uh, 26%. So, like we said, that is basically 
part of it is in advanced stages and which we hope to uh, make up the booking in the in the next quarter and uh, which should therefore flow into uh, delivering the revenue uh, and the margin guidance for the full year. Cash generation is the other uh, bullet point I should point out, uh, which continues to be very robust. The last 12 months uh, OCF operating cash flow is at uh, almost $2.5 uh, billion, and the free cash flow at uh, $2.33 uh, billion, uh, being 135% uh, and 126% of uh, net income, uh, respectively. And our balance sheet uh, is continues to be very strong despite paying out almost $600 million of uh, dividend in this quarter. The gross cash is at $2.664 billion and net cash at close to $2.4 billion. Uh, on a diluted EPS basis, uh, this per share for the last 12 months is now at 55.70, uh, which is uh, up 11.3% year on year. And the board has declared a dividend of rupees 10 for the quarter in keeping with our past practice. Uh, the record date for which is 20th July, and uh, the payment date uh, shall be 1st of August uh, 2023. And with that uh, 10 rupees, we continue on the last 12 months to be 48 rupees per share, uh, which works out to 86% payout ratio on our uh, LTM EPS of 55.7, uh, which is obviously in line with our capital payout policy. With that, uh, operator, back to you for uh, Q&A. Thank, Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Mm -hmm. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is on the line of Ankur Rudra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question. Um, so if you can maybe the first question on how the demand and revenue performance played out in the in the first quarter versus your expectation. Is this what, what you were anticipating given that you maintained the guidance and um, um, also if you could characterize the tech, enterprise tech spend environment, you know, despite seasonality and, and the strong dealings you had in the past? Uh, Ankur, as I said in my initial remark, uh, while we expected the quarter to be soft, uh, it came in uh, more, I mean, lower than our own expectations. And uh, that's, uh, while all the large deals that we won, we really executed extremely well. They all ramped up. They've all delivered good revenue growth, as you can see in uh, both uh, life sciences and manufacturing verticals, and even uh, life sciences, uh, Yes, yes, financial services, manufacturing, and life sciences, we've seen good growth. Uh, tech and telecom is where we uh, we saw more uh, more drops than what we had expected. And uh, we were expecting some projects to go, uh, go online, uh, but uh, towards the second half of the quarters, uh, that did not happen. So we, uh, we did have people... Uh, we were ready, and they did not really move forward. There were a couple of instances, one tech and telecom. Uh, so it was uh, uh, it was disappointing for us uh, to have that uh, situation, which not only uh, declined and declined our revenue, but it also had a big impact on our margins. Uh, having said that, uh, see, obviously this whole cycle, the way I'm seeing is. The discretionary spend is moderating, and it is probably stabilizing at a certain level. And the cost and efficiency-led programs have to fill in the gap and create net incremental growth. Uh, we believe that uh, state is achieved in three of our verticals, manufacturing, uh, financial services, and life sciences. 
and the other verticals are a little bit lagging behind. Uh, so we are also tracking the pipeline and the maturity of the pipeline uh, for some of the large cost efficiency deals, and they seem to be on track. Uh, while our booking has been soft, we think uh, we will deliver a strong booking in Q2. And uh, if I look at the revenue translation of the deals that we expect to sign in Q2, uh, there is a certain nature which helps us uh, get revenue quickly. Uh, so I think that that's really what we're seeing, and it's, it's really a new cycle that's evolving, uh, which is really offsetting uh, the moderation and discretionary spend uh, is offset with the uh, growth in uh, efficiency like programs. Understand? Uh, you know, I understand that you know it's very uncertain. The demand environment is difficult for you to to you know to to spur it to play out exactly as you predicted at the beginning of the year. Uh, but do you think uh, maybe by maintaining your revenue guidance? You are potentially, you know, backing yourself into a corner if the uncertainty persists, and while you have large deals, if, this, if the softness in smaller deals continues, you might be at risk of at least reducing the upper end of the guide. So, of course, we have looked at. Uh, uh, I mean, we've had a pretty good track record of uh, looking at our pipeline, looking at our conversion, and uh, uh, kind of giving a guidance and meeting the guidance. So, so whenever we've given guidance. In the last five years, we've, we've delivered to it. Uh, so we believe all the math behind it and all the judgment behind it is very robust. And it does factor in some of the challenges in the macro environment, uh, which we did even in the when we gave the annual guidance. Uh, so I remain uh, confident of delivering to the guidance this year. Okay, appreciate it. Now, maybe not one last question on Jenny Gen and thank you for all the color you shared. Uh, just curious about how you're seeing this playing out in the marketplace in, in contracts. Uh, given you have a high participation in some of the cost takeout deals, maybe on the cloud side, is this showing up in discussions as a source of you know price deflation that maybe you or our competitors are, are, are driving and hence might impact your uh, contract profitability going forward? So, Ankur, at this point, uh, most of the conversations on Gen AI is more uh, innovation-led, uh, and uh, we have not seen. I mean, obviously, customers are always challenging us to demonstrate the art of the possible. And uh, at this point, I don't see anyone trying to take a contractual position of how much we have to deliver through this technology because there are too many dependencies. So I think there is definitely a lot of hype in the in the short term, uh, but we do believe it will it will have some meaningful benefits in the long run. Now, as you see benefits, I think one of the key benefits are going to be uh, around efficiency, so which means there will be some deflation, but I think it's at least two to three years away, and uh, I do believe it will get offset with so many projects in a very very short uh, a few weeks. You have 140. Uh, projects, so some of them pilots, some of them implementation, uh, some of the examples that I shared earlier as well. So I think there is going to be a, a little more uptake on small projects, which are really looking at proof of concepts and some implementation. And maybe gradually as it matures, there is going to be some more focus on how much efficiency it can drive. And I see that at least two to three years away at this point. Appreciate it. Thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Before we move to the next participant, I'd like to remind the participants to limit your question to one per participant. If, if any follow up, you may join the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kavaljit Saluja from Kotak. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, CVK, uh, my question is uh, again uh, related to your guidance. Uh, now, when I look at your guidance, right, across the last three quarters, uh, you know, in December, you had to come and, uh, you know, indicate that after raising guidance that your revenues will be the lower end of the band. In March, you ended up missing your uh, services revenue guidance, wherein the services revenues came in at 0.6% growth. In June, again, the numbers came in lower than uh, what you expected. Uh, you know, now I understand that the demand environment is, uh, you know, uncertain. But you know, uh, uh, any uh, uh, you know aspect that you have seen in the revenue forecasting process, uh, perhaps uh, 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 you know, which perhaps uh, you know uh, needs uh, strengthening or something of that sort. And a related question, uh, you know, uh, on it is that uh, when you look at the 
uh, hurdle weight. Actually, last quarter, uh, when I did ask you this question, you did mention the CQGR hurdle weight. I mean, uh, you know, it's fairly modest. Now, um, that seems to have gone into a fairly unrealistic level. Uh, 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 so, why persist with the guidance, uh, uh, you know, when the math in itself is working against you? Yeah, uh, so maybe I'll ask Pratik to answer the revenue forecasting question and then I will come back to you on the guide. Maybe I'll take a shot at both and then you can add Jirinjit. So, Kaval, uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, the ask rate in cricket terminology, the ask rate has certainly gone up. Uh, and as CDK covered uh, right up front, uh, the first quarter actual has come in uh, lower than what we had uh, uh, planned on. And therefore, uh, you know, the ask rate, which let's say at the lower end of the band, if we take that just for example, uh, was somewhere around 2, 2.5% two odd, uh, which has now gone up to about 3.2% odd, right? Uh, but uh, we have done the math and uh, we have done the, uh, the the numbers I shared and CVK shared on the pipeline are what is uh, giving us the confidence and uh, the stage of the deals in the pipeline is what is uh, making us stick with the guidance. Uh, yes, the pipeline is one factor uh, which we have penciled in. Uh, things could go better, things could go worse. We obviously do a probability of timing, probability of winning, and all of those uh, matrices uh, that I'm sure everybody does. And at this point in time, we still want to retain. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are confident, as CVK already said, that we will meet the guidance. Uh, and like you also pointed out, there are other factors. Uh, so if at a later point in time it becomes better, then that's good for us. If, if it becomes much worse, which practically we don't see happening because we've already seen, like you pointed out in your question itself, uh, we have seen uh, last uh, two or even three quarters uh, being softer than uh, what uh, uh, you know, would anybody would have imagined, say, one year back or nine months back. Uh, so these are estimates, and uh, we'll see where where we go. So that's that's what I wanted to say. On the forecasting piece itself, I think uh, we do have a, a fairly robust uh, way of uh, forecasting. Uh, obviously, like I just described, forecasting does work on certain estimates and uh, if the environment changes during the quarters uh, like the last three quarters, estimates can go wrong. I'm sure it's going wrong uh, pretty much across the board uh, given the way the environment is. Uh, and uh, that's where I'll leave it. I, I don't think there is something uh, seriously broken or anything. Uh, at the end of it, ultimately it's a judgment there is some hope, there is some practicality, and there is some buffer uh, that we build in, and uh, those are the elements we continue to play with. Yeah, so, so covering one thing from a revenue forecasting perspective, there's one, one aspect which we believe, uh, I think the industry is still struggling with, is to really uh, forecast this drop in discretionary spend. Uh, so I think that's where I think uh, we've got it wrong a couple of times. So we continue to get the feedback and input into our planning process. Uh, I think there is a lot of volatility in that, and that's the only element which we do believe we can improve a little bit more based on what we've seen in the last two, three quarters. Uh, coming to the guidance, I think uh, the ask rate has gone up. It essentially boils down to how much booking we can deliver in Q2. And uh, what we can do in the next 45 days will determine the course of the year. And we have some reasonable level of confidence on accomplishing the outcomes that we expect. 
So, uh, you know, Siri, I think that, uh, and uh, Pratik, you know, thank you for that uh, fantastic color. Uh, really appreciate it. The question, you know, uh, really is that, you know, for you to achieve the guidance, you need a big spike up, uh, uh, you know, in the second quarter itself, because, uh, you know, uh, so do you have that confidence? And the second and related question to it is that you know, normally in the cost takeout deals, consolidation deals, there's a free transition offered. There are timelines, like the sort of deal that you announced in the insurance vertical in uh, October, started ramping up towards March, right? So even if let's say the pipeline converts, uh, uh, you know, isn't it too late uh, uh, to meet the further rate that you have for your guidance? So I think uh, the deals are different, nature of deals are different. Some of them have an ability to convert to revenue uh, faster. And uh, that's the nature of deals that we have. And uh, that's what is driving this. Okay. Uh, that's a final question on profitability. Uh, 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 you know, uh, you know uh, Pratik, what is the kind of uh, a sales that you'll get from profitability uh, uh, through possibly uh, you know, change in the Compensation revision cycle for uh, this year. Uh, I don't want to really talk uh, numbers on that, uh, but uh, E4 and above is a is a significant portion of the wage bill. I don't want to get into exact numbers, but uh, like I said at the press conference, also we have made a plan. Uh, we have revised that plan uh, based on the numbers that we see for Q1. Uh, obviously, we have revised it by taking in more actions and uh, more cost uh, cutbacks uh, that we need to do. Uh, I think the leadership team is all apprised of the situation. The numbers gap is obviously visible to all of us and everybody. And uh, I think as a leadership team, we are committed uh, that we will take the actions to meet the numbers. Yes, and the, normally if you see the past years, uh, the wage, wage hike generally has been impact of 50 to 100 basis points, depending on how much increments we gave. So we do believe uh, there is uh, some of that will flow into the savings. Mr. Saluja, may I request you to join the queue for any follow-up? Yes, thanks so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, so, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your question to one per participant. If time permits, you may join the queue for any follow-up. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Makul Garg from Motila Losal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, so uh, Siddiqui, first, uh, just a clarification on uh, you know the whole discussion about guidance. Uh, you mentioned about some large deal wins. Uh, you know, are uh, you factoring in a quick scale up in these wins, and, and does that mean that there is a bit of a rebadging which is involved here? Uh, if not, then you know what is the degree of confidence uh, that the muted environment won't push out the ramp up, uh, as Kaval also asked. So I don't want to call out the very specifics about uh, the nature of these, uh, but uh, given uh, all what we have said in the last 10, 15 minutes, uh, we should assume that uh, the significant part of this advanced pipeline uh, can convert into revenue relatively quicker than what you've seen in the last two, three last days that we've done. Thank you, Mr. Garg. Please join the queue for any follow-up. Sure. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Gaurav from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my question. So, CVK, the question is around the verticals of tech and telecom. We talked about uncertainty. So, was this largely deferrals or some cancellations? And are these behind us, or you think this will continue to be an issue in the near term? Thank you. From all what we are seeing, we think it is stabilized. Uh, but uh, this has been so volatile, so I won't be able to give you more color on that. Uh, it looks like these are stabilized. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next question is from Sandeep Shah from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just for clarity in terms of the guidance. I'd like to say, could you use the handset, please? Your voice is not very clear. Is the uh, audible now? Yes, better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a clarity in terms of the guidance, CBK. So, do you believe the 2Q conversion of deal pipeline into deal wins will also result into a better growth from 2Q onwards, or do you expect the growth to pick up from 3Q? Because historically, uh, to achieve the guidance because of the high return rate, even fourth quarter is being a softer. So, in that scenario, 2Q has to do a heavy lifting along with 3Q as well. Uh. So, Sandeep, uh, we don't give a quarterly view, but uh, as I said, even in the beginning of the year, uh, the quarters will get incrementally better. That was the uh, commentary that I made even when we presented the guidance. Uh, so, I think you should see incrementally better growth, and obviously, this means there's going to be a spike in one of the quarters. Uh, so, that's to be expected. And this last bookkeeping, uh, uh, Pratik, what was the one-time benefit in the intangible amortization? Is it uh, worth how much basis point in this quarter and will it reverse in the second quarter? No, so it will certainly not reverse in the second quarter. It is a one-time of benefit. This is, this is the impairment we had taken a couple of years back uh, in one of the products. And uh, the product has done well. Uh, in the last two years, and we have been able to increase the royalty we get from that. So the revenues are significantly up, and therefore, uh, as per the accounting rules, uh, we needed to write it back, write the impairment back, and uh, that's what it is. So it's, it's just a one time benefit in this quarter, and uh, there are no repercussions on any of the next subsequent quarters. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Requested to join the queue for any follow-ups. The next question is on the line of Sudhir Guntupalli from Kotak Mahindra AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, just one uh, uh, clarification on uh, the decline in tech and telecom. Uh, so, so uh, did you allude to the fact that this is largely within the ERND, this can be mapped to the ERND segment? Uh, no, it's uh, it's um, if you see the decline, uh, uh, the numbers are quite high, and uh, of course, R and D bore the brunt of it. It definitely had uh, impact on the ITBS as well. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Kachadia from Ashika <coughs> Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. I I want to know what are what type of orders or are working we are taking the year in this case. I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. Uh, uh, what type of orders are we taking into year in the segment? Uh, so I have Vijay Gunto who is the engineering services. Vijay, if you can share, could you just give some color on the type of uh, orders that we are? Yes, thanks, Vivek, and thanks, Shira, for the question. Uh, we are seeing uh, two kinds. One is uh, consolidation in uh, each of the tech and telecom segments. Uh, we are seeing more consolidation deals, and hence uh, a pipeline that is growing. And uh, to what CBK said earlier, uh, that is helping us uh, gain more confidence that uh, when these deals uh, fructify, uh, realization to revenue will be quicker. So that's one uh, we are seeing. So consolidation uh, is uh, on. The second we are seeing is uh, decision making, uh, which used to be reasonable, is getting a little delayed. So those are two trends uh, we are seeing in terms of uh, pipeline and order booking. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Menon from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you think, as you said, you know, it looks like the telecom and uh, the tech uh, typical declines. You are not very clear. So it looks like the tech and telecom uh, yeah, yeah. declines are you know more than just year and D. Uh, you know, so want to check. Uh, you know, are these uh, uh, over pretty much? Uh, and should we think these verticals will return to growth? That's the first. And the second uh, follow-up on. 
you know, the nature of the R and D work that you do versus you know pure play R and D firms. I mean, most of the pure play R and D firms, I think, haven't seen this sort of uh, QoQ decline. And now you've seen this uh, for two successive quarters. So just wanted uh, some color on what led to this decline. Yeah, Ravi, I think it's our exposure to tech vertical, which is primarily, uh, which is contributed to it, uh, tech and telecom on the R and D side. Uh, maybe most others have exposure to some you know, of the other industries. Uh, but, I mean, I cannot comment on others, but that's our, our kind of uh, hypothesis. And uh, maybe, Vijay, you can add a little bit more on this. Yes, we can. Uh, certainly, uh, our tech exposure is more, especially big tech, and uh, we've seen a lot of uh, <coughs> consolidation and uh, rationalization of spend. I think uh, from what we see in the market, that uh, consolidation uh, and rationalization of spend is uh, stabilizing now, and uh, we expect uh, the deal pipeline that we are having, having now to convert. Uh, that's what we are seeing. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Surendra Goel from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Han. So, Sidike, on ERMD, uh, is the worst over, and should we expect it to be back into growth trajectory going forward? Yes, Surendra, that's what we believe. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Next question is in the line of Manik Paneja from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. While my question on the ERD outlook essentially has been answered, just wanted to understand your hiring plans in the backdrop of uh, some of the near term values that you have seen. Maybe Ram, could you answer that? I think our hiring plans, quarter on quarter, we do moderate our plans to be in line with our. Uh, a forecast for the quarter, the revenue forecast for the quarter. Uh, next quarter uh, is, is typically the quarter where the uh, uh, fresher intake will be uh, higher. So that will continue uh, as planned. So uh, this is that will moderate our uh, requirements for lateral hires. And uh, there is also some amount of uh, productivity based releases that we expect to happen. So that will also feed into some of the growth. Uh, so to that extent, uh, we are not dependent on a lot of hiring for growth in Q2. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Apurva Prasad from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yep, uh, thanks. Uh, so my question is uh, on the revenue growth side and so the, the ask rate differential. Uh, and what I'm trying to understand is uh, uh, the top end of the guidance, are you factoring faster acceleration? So between the top end and the bottom end, are you factoring in faster acceleration in H2 uh, or a spike starting Q2? Uh, and I ask this as uh, you are entering with headwinds in Q2, as you stated earlier that uh, uh, the weaker than expected second half in the first quarter in the telecom uh, vertical will, will play out full quarter of Q2, as well as the weekend booking. So, so how should we look at uh, the difference between uh, the lower and the top end? Um, I don't want to comment on the, the where we will land in the guidance. So at this point, we will just stay with the guided range. And obviously, because of uh, week to Q1, uh, obviously, we, we have to deliver a much stronger H2 to deliver uh, deliver to the growth. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Surinja Goel from City Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, last quarter you had uh, shared that the ACV for the year was plus 4% year over year. What is it on a TTM basis uh, at the end of Q1 Q? I don't have a number on a TTM basis, but for the quarter, it is 21% uh, lower year on year. Thank you. 
The next question is in the line of Rahul Jain from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to understand uh, your thoughts on the ERNS space. Uh, what led to this kind of an impact uh, and how you see this uh, uh, segment to perform in the coming quarter? Is, this, is there any trend related to vertical or specific to uh, any discretionary spend thought process, or these are just one off for now? Yeah, I think we covered some of this in the previous commentary, but uh, maybe I'll request Vijay to uh, share it again. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. I think uh, we talked about uh, the deal pipeline uh, stronger. That is the first indicator for us, and we expect that to uh, convert to order book and uh, hence to revenue. And the conversion cycles in our business uh, are shorter in the e-space. Uh, so we expect that uh, we will uh, perform better in the next quarter. So the, these are your general thoughts, but is it any uh, different from a sub-vertical perspective or this is uh, an overall thought process that you see? No, that, uh, the tech and telecom part of our ERD business, uh, which got impacted uh, quite a bit, uh, like we've been talking about, uh, those we see uh, conversion and uh, we see uh, back to growth situation there. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference back to Mr. C. Vijay Kumar for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on this uh, first quarter uh, earnings announcement. Uh, we do take our commitments very seriously. So uh, in spite of uh, uh, weaker performance in Q1, we, we are confident of delivering to the commitments that we have made. And uh, we look forward to your support and look forward to talking to you during the quarter and at to reverse. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of HCL Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.